Welcome to the new space. And I know it looks kind of the same. Basically, we moved apartments, but we didn't change buildings, so the fixtures look all the same. But it is a new apartment. We have more space. We have a better, like, bar build out back here. It's very fun. And also, I've added quite a few things to my little, like, brew bar back here. So I will be showing that to you in a video soon, but that's not today. Today, we're talking about French presses. And I like to think that I've been the champion of French presses for quite a while now. One of the very first videos I did was called, So You Want a French Press? Now what? And we talked about a bunch of different ways to use them from brewing hot coffee to doing cold brew to even frothing milk and making lattes. They're super versatile, affordable, and accessible ways to get into brewing coffee on your own. Your average French press will run you about $20 to maybe $40 on the higher end. That's pretty much about it. Besides that, all you need is hot water and ground coffee and you're set to go. Now, do French presses yield the best cup of coffee? Depends on your preference. A lot of the primary complaints that come from French presses is that they have a very like sludgy body to them. Now, where you get the sludge is frequently if you're not straining it correctly or if there are any leaks in the seal in that plunger, you'll get some of those really fine, fine particles. You'll get maybe some loose grounds even coming up into your coffee drink. Meaning once you pour it into your mug, you're gonna get like some like kind of like sandiness to it, which some people really, really like that. However, generally we don't look for that in a coffee. We would like it to be groundless, no pulp in our coffee. Now, one of the other main complaints about the French press is that it's not a very like customizable brewer. As in, you're gonna put everything in, your coffee, your water, all of that stuff, you're gonna set a timer and then you're gonna come back and it's all brewed, which makes it very, very accessible for getting started. However, if you're really looking to control your extraction, maybe it's not the way you go. Anywho, that's the French press in a nutshell. Switching gears, let's talk about another thing fellow products. They have brewers, they have grinders, they have cups, they have pitchers, they have everything you could imagine. And in fact, whether you know it or not, just in this bar setup right now, there are like three fellow products in screen. And if you open up that cabinet right there, there are like four more. I really, really, really enjoy this brand. Not sponsored by the way, although if they want to. Anyways, I'm a big fan of them, so I follow them on a lot of platforms. And the other day I saw that they were releasing a French press. Color me excited. Now they launched the French press and I click through because I wanna see what it's all about. And I took a very, very sharp intake of breath when I saw the price point because their French press is selling between 99 and $129. So I bought one <laughs> and we're gonna try it out today. We're gonna to talk through it and we're gonna see if it's actually worth that much. But before that, I wanna give a huge thank you to the people who are making today's video possible who are public. I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Public, and more specifically, publicmdc.com. If you're looking to invest in the stock market, no matter how big or how small, I highly recommend checking out Public. Personally, I'm a total newbie at investing and Public makes it easy for even someone like me to get started. And with Public, not only did I get all the tools and information I needed, but Public also makes the stock market interesting and, well, social. Turns out it's really awesome and helpful to share and learn about new ideas and ways to invest with a social community of investors. And when I say you can get started with any amount of money, I mean that. They have features like fractional investing, which if you didn't know, allows you to buy stocks in small slices. That way you can get just, for example, some Shopify, Apple, or even Disney stock without having to spend big. And all of that is made so much better by the fact that if you go to publicmdc.com right now, you can get up to $50 in free stock once you open an account. That's publicmdc.com because there's never a better moment than now to learn more and start planning for your future. Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about the fellow French press. So this right here, this is the Clara French press. Or Clara, you're gonna have to let me know how it's pronounced. This right here is their $129 model. Now they have a version of this as well that is $99 that does not come with the walnut accents. It's just gonna be matte black on these finishes as well. First thing I wanna say is that this feels very luxurious. This has a very, very beautiful matte finish on the outside. And let's just say it looks super pretty too. This is a French press you wanna have on your counter. But anyways, you have this and then your package also comes with something else, the agitation stick. Okay, no, but for real, all of the Clara French presses come with this thing right here. And if you don't know what an agitation stick is besides just something to whack people with, uh, it's something that you will use to stir up your coffee grounds if you prefer to make sure all of your grounds are evenly saturated. If you've watched any of my videos about French presses in the back, you may have seen me just use a kitchen spoon or like a nice long spoon to do this but it's kind of fun that the Clara French press comes with a matching one. One of the features that this French press has that some others don't is an all directional pour lid, meaning this screen
screen has holes all the way around it, meaning you don't have to rotate this any particular direction to ultimately pour your coffee out of it. This allows you to pour from any angle. Another thing is that this French press is double walled, which is very, very, very nice because it will maintain heat for a lot longer. Okay, that's all fun and games, but let's back it up and compare it to a French press that I have used for a very, very long time and is currently one of my favorites. You might recognize this bad boy. This right here is the OXO French press. I always considered this to be slightly on the higher end. This retails for just under $40 USD and it's got some really nifty features. First of all, you can deconstruct it to come in four very distinct parts. You have your casing, if you will. You have a glass carafe that is gonna be what you brew your coffee in. And then you have this thing, which is a very, very nifty tool that a lot of you have asked me about. This is a coffee scoop. So you will set it inside your French press. Your grounds will sit on top here while you're brewing. And then when you're all done, once you've poured all of your coffee out, you're able to just kind of lift it up and easily toss the grounds into the trash. And then of course you have your plunger and you have your lid, which I will mention does not have that all directional pouring. Now, let me remind everyone that this French press is like one third the cost of this one right here. And before we brew and compare with both of them, because we are gonna do that, I do wanna talk about some of the first very, very noticeable differences that I see when I look at these. The first thing of course is appearance. This French press, I have to say, really, really catches my eye. It's gorgeous. The next biggest thing is gonna be material. As I mentioned before, this is a stainless steel exterior, but it does have this glass carafe, which is what you're gonna be brewing in. Now glass chambers are pretty standard for mid to higher tier French presses. It's easy to clean, you can run it through a dishwasher, but it doesn't hold heat very well, which I would say is a downside for this French press and most French presses in general. This right here is double walled, meaning your coffee stays hotter and at your peak temperature for a lot longer. I will mention one very annoying thing about that feature though, is that you can no longer wash this in the dishwasher. This is hand wash only at this point, which is, yeah, give or take, depends if you have a dishwasher or if you don't. Some people might find that annoying, some people might be fine with it. Now let's take a peek at our two different plungers. At the bottom of both of them, you have a very, very fine mesh filter. There isn't a super noticeable visual difference between the size of the metal filter here. Oh, and just kidding, I have one more thing. The very, very last thing is that this is just a plastic top. This feels kind of flimsy, feels a little bit cheaper. And while this lid is constructed with plastic, it still has that really nice matte black coating. That won't change your brew at all. However, it just kind of is a nice touch. Now, the last thing I'll note before we do some side to side brewing, because I think that's very necessary here, is that these are two different sizes of French press. This one holds 32 ounces. This one holds 24 ounces of coffee. So even though they kind of look the same size, because this one is double walled, the interior is a lot smaller in capacity than the outside makes it look, which just means we'll have to adjust our coffee recipe for each one of these. But that's no worries because we can do math. <laughs> <laughs> I say nervously. So the things I wanna look for when we're comparing these two. The first thing I'm gonna look for is how clean is the coffee? What I mean by that is how much grounds have come through, how much of those tiny like microscopic coffee particles have come through and muddied up my drink. Is it a no pulp or is it a pulp coffee? <laughs> Second thing I'm gonna pay attention to is how hot does my coffee stay? And lastly, how is the overall brewing process in terms of like the touch and feel of these? How smoothly does the plunger press down? How do I like using the agitation stick versus just a spoon that I'd have lying around my kitchen. Is cleanup easy? Because that's a big question I have. It's a very broad category. Okay, so we've got our two French presses here. And while I am going to weigh out my coffee, I wanna say one really cool thing about the Clara. It's probably a little bit difficult to see because of how reflective and shadowy this is, but inside there are markings for your fill line. Also apologies about the water boiling. But if you don't wanna weigh out your coffee or don't have a scale, there is a marking down deep inside here that will show you how much ground coffee to put in, and then a spot for your water. This is a good accessibility thing. I like this. We're ready to go. Okay, so I have my water already and it's at about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna add about 300 grams of water to this and then I'm gonna stir it with my handy dandy agitation stick for about 30 seconds. After that, I'm gonna add the rest of my water, which in total is gonna be 840 grams. I'm just gonna do some nice calm kind of stirring motions. Basically, I'm trying to get all the coffee moving to make sure it is fully and evenly covered in water. We don't want any like dry hiding bits. We don't want anything like clumping together. You're gonna get a pretty uneven extraction if that happens. Agitation stick, very nice, very soft. Didn't scrape the bottom. You're not gonna worry about any scratches happening. So this is nice. Now let's add the rest of our water. Perfect, and now I'm gonna let it brew for four minutes. Okay, 
So while both of these are finishing brewing and I am retying my apron, initial thoughts is I really, really like how this works. It just feels very premium. I don't know if that's some sort of like psychological effect of knowing how much this costs or if that's real. It's very, very smooth. There's nothing catching on the side, which is nice. Now this coffee sitting in my cup right now is about 180 degrees. So there was some decrease in temperature. That is completely normal. That's gonna happen no matter what. But let's see if it was a greater or lesser decrease than what happened in here. Okay, the OXO one right now is sitting at about 165 degrees, which is a decent 15 degrees less than the Clara one. So double walled insulation, very nice. Now both of these cups have the exact same Colombian coffee. Both of them were prepared within the same ratio. They had the same parameters of water temperature, of time brewed, of all of those things. The only real significant thing was the difference in brewer. Will that bring a completely different taste to one of them? I don't know, let's try. So first up we have the OXO, which I have used for years. It's a pretty clean cup. You do have like a slightly thicker feel of the coffee. This is again, going back to that kind of like sludginess that comes with the French press. It feels very, very heavy in your mouth. If you serve this to me, I would probably be able to tell that it was a French press coffee, but it's nice. You know, it's tasty, it's easy. It's standard. Over here, we have the Clara. Already there's a much lighter feel to it. Like the sip itself feels like it's lighter, which personally in my mind is a good thing. With it being lighter, you get a lot more of those brighter flavors of the coffee really opening up and it feels like a lot cleaner cup. So taste wise, if you serve these to me, I would absolutely pick this one. I think this is the superior cup of coffee. And that's not at all to say that this is a bad cup of coffee. This just feels like an elevated one. But now let's see how many actual tiny coffee particles are left in here. How I'm gonna do that is we're gonna pour these cups of coffee through a paper filter. That way, in theory, like it would in a pour over, the coffee liquid is gonna go through the filter and those small particles that might've slipped through the metal mesh screen are gonna stick to the filter. We have filtered both of the coffees. We've got some differences, so let's take a closer look. Now, off the bat, you can see that there is a fairly comparable amount of coffee grounds left at the bottom. This is normal for pretty much any French press you brew. There will always be some sort of like residual grounds. This stuff is incredibly fine. I almost wanna describe it like ocean silt. This is due to the fact that we're using a metal filter that just can't catch everything. Now, that aside, let's look at these filters. The Clara has significantly less left over on the filter. Whereas on the OXO, you've got a good amount like right here. You've got some here and it's it's pretty dense. This significant decrease in grounds is why this cup right here was a lot cleaner and a lot lighter. So as far as cleanliness in the cup goes, I'll give it to the Clara. I would much rather drink this amount of silt than I would this amount. Okay, but the very last big difference that we're gonna look at How's the cleanup? So we finished both of our pots of coffee and now it's time to clean them. You have this one, which can for the most part go into the dishwasher and you have this one that is gonna be hand wash only. But before you can think about either of those things, you have to figure out a way to get all of these coffee grounds out. So let's say we wanna compost them and put them in here. So for the OXO, it's fairly easy. As I mentioned before, you have this scoop. So all you need to do is lift carefully. Don't do this too fast. And you got this nice, puck of coffee that you can then just kind of dump there, stick back in, and you're ready to go rinse this out and put it in your dishwasher. However, if you'll note, you have this all sitting at the bottom and we're gonna have to kind of shake this out. Oh, we still got some in there. You know, maybe we'll use our agitation stick. Okay, so more time intensive for sure, but we have also gotten most of the grounds out here or at least a comparable amount. So after all of that, is the Clara French press really worth three times the cost of the OXO one? It's kind of a complicated question. First of all, as in with all things, I think it really lies in where your priorities are. Do I think this brews a better cup of coffee? Yes, but does this brew a good cup of coffee? Also yes. The features of this French press right here are very, very efficient. You can clean it easily, you can get started with it easily, it all breaks apart in small pieces and it's pretty affordable. However, if you're looking for something that is coffee forward, that is we're looking at the drink more than we are the efficiency of it, I think this does take the cake. It's a really, really nice clean cup of coffee, something that's pretty difficult to find with French press. Additionally, it definitely takes the cake aesthetically. This feels like a premium product. It feels luxurious. Like just having it in your hands, the matte finish is so nice. And if you're someone like me who 
has kind of a nicely built out bar setup, I want this on my shelf. The price point, of course, will put a lot of people off. Let's be clear, this is an expensive French press. In my personal opinion, the Clara French press does have the chops to back up its price tag. If you're someone who uses a French press two to three times a week, I think you'd make back your investment on this very quickly. But that's not to say I don't think you can absolutely use the OXO as well. Think about your priorities and then decide. I think this is a really, really fun product. I think it's really well designed. And I think it brews an excellent cup of coffee. Fellow, of course, has knocked it out of the park as I would expect them to. I would give this a seal of approval as someone who has used a French press for a very, very long time. But hopefully this video has helped showed which one of these excel at different things. And then you can look at your priorities and see which one lines up best with you. I'll link everything I talked about today in the description down below if you want to check it out. That being said, you can find me as usual on TikTok and Instagram at Morgan Drinks Coffee. I make content on there pretty much daily. Now that I am fairly caffeinated, I have created a massive mess in my kitchen. I'm gonna go clean this up and have a good rest of my day. And I hope you do too. Okay, I'll see you next time. <laughs>